The greatest want of the world is the want of men. Men who cannot be bought or sold. Men who in their innermost souls are true and honest. Men who do not fear to call sin by its right name. Men whose conscience is true to duty as the needle to the poor. Men who will stand for the right though the heavens fall. This is a befitting description of Zambia's third president, Levi Patrick Monawasa. Levi Patrick Monawasa ruled Zambia from 2001 and died on 19th August 2008. Twelve years later, the memory of him remains vivid in death as he was in public life. Monawasa is widely regarded as one of Zambia's most effective leaders who promoted democracy, good governance and the rule of law. The presidency was the ultimate platform on which he enacted important values that had formed since childhood and which define his legacy. These values include the importance of family and community, a deep love for learning, capacity for effective and selfless leadership, loyalty to principle, moral wealth of character, including an aversion to corruption, faith in one's fellow human beings, and proactive use of the law as a shield for the weak and ordinary citizen and not as a sword for the elite and the powerful. Throughout his life, Manawasa gave expression to these ideals. The late President Levi Patrick Manawasa can be described as a man who really shifted the economic destiny of our country through his um, consistence in areas of fiscal discipline. Uh, he himself uh, governed his own life with great principles of restraint and constraint. Um, he based his governance system on principle and uh, not on popularity. Second born in a family of six, Levi Mwanawasa was born on 3rd September 1948 in the mining town of Mufulira on the Copper Belt province. Mwanawasa went to Arusha Primary School in Luansha in 1958. He then attended Fiwale Mission School before proceeding to Chiwala Secondary School in Ndola, where his leadership qualities were first noticed by the school authorities, who appointed him head boy in 1969, the year when he completed grade 12. Mwanawasa then attended the University of Zambia in 1970, and whilst there, his leadership qualities were further developed when he was elected vice president of the University of Zambia Students' Union Unzasu, a platform that gave him the opportunity to hone his political skills and appreciate the importance of fostering competitive democracy. He graduated from the University of Zambia with a low degree in 1973. Following his completion of legal studies, which included passing the qualifying courses at the Legal Practice Institute, now Ziali, at first attempt, Mwanawasa worked as an assistant at Jackies and Partners, a prominent private law firm under the leadership of distinguished lawyers like John Mwanakatwe and Willa Mungomba. He remained at the firm from 1975 to 1978, when he formed his own law practice, Mwanawasa and Company. The development of his leadership qualities was given another boost when he was elected as Vice President of the Law Association of Zambia in 1982. President Kenneth Kaunda noted Mwanawasa's growing profile and seeking to benefit from his talents, appointed him as Solicitor General in 1985 a job where he served for 11 months and 14 days. Mwanawasa's star rose sharply over the course of the 1980s, developing from a young advocate to a prominent lawyer who successfully defended high-profile cases like the one involving Zambia Congress of Trade Union President Frederick Chiluba and treason-accused former Army Commander Lieutenant General Kristen Temple. 
In September 1990, the political landscape was pluralized and the Movement for Multi-Party Democracy, MMD, transformed itself into a political party in January 1991. Mwanawasa was later elected party vice president. The MMD, featuring as the main opposition challenger, went on to defeat UNIP in an election that saw Mwanawasa elected as member of parliament for Chifuvu constituency in Ndola. Chiluba was elected president and after he took office on 2nd November, named a cabinet that included Mwanawasa as Zambia's vice president. Barely a month in power, Mwanawasa survived a tragic road traffic accident on 8th December 1991 and suffered multiple injuries. After his recovery, Mwanawasa continued to serve as vice president until 3rd July 1994, when he resigned his cabinet position, citing growing levels of corruption in government and the lack of transparency and accountability. In December 1995, he unsuccessfully challenged President Chiluba for the leadership of the MMD before he chose not to defend his parliamentary seat in the 1996 elections. Mwanawasa retired from mainstream politics that year and returned to private law practice, where he remained until July 2001. Following the failure of President Chiluba's third-term bid, the MMD National Executive Committee nominated him as the party's presidential candidate in that year's general election. The National Executive Committee, which met on 21st July, 18th, 19th, 22nd, and the early morning of 23rd, which is today, August 2001, has decided to nominate Mr. Levy Patrick Manawasa, State Council, as its presidential candidate after an open and transparent selection process. I didn't expect it, and uh, Mr. Chairman, you can rest assured that I've gladly and willingly accepted the challenge. I have no doubt at all that uh, with uh, the support of uh, all the members of the National Executive Committee and indeed our uh, own uh, party cadres, we will deliver and we will defeat all the political parties which will be competing yeah. in the first time. Mwanawasa took office as president in January 2002 after defeating 10 other candidates in the 27th December 2001 elections. As an ardent believer in the rule of law, President Mwanawasa immediately embarked on a vicious anti-corruption crusade which earned him respect and won him the confidence of the international community but made him unpopular, especially among members of his party, the MMD. I have not come into politics just to play and to play games of deceit and the plundering. I have come into government, into politics, uh, to make a contribution to my nation. And I want, and I want everybody to help me to solve those problems. We, we invested a lot in politics when we were campaigning up to December 2001. Now is the time for us to invest in matters which advance this nation forward. Over the course of the next five years, he appointed four different individuals to the position of Zambia's vice president, starting with Enoch Kavindele, Nevis Mumba, Lupando Mwape, and Rupia Banda. Such a high turnover of vice presidents demonstrated Mwanawasa's commitment to nurturing alternative leaders by exposing them to positions of greater responsibility. I did not know President Mwanawasa prior to my appointment uh, per se. Uh, my interaction with the president was when he called me uh, to discuss the possibility of us working together. And what he told me touched my heart. Because first of all, he said to me, Nevers, my goal is to fight corruption. 
we campaigned together for 2001 election. I was running for president, he was running for president. And he won the election, I lost. When time came later on to decide who his vice president should be, um, he decided to uh, use my name and called me and asked me for a discussion. When we finally had the discussion, two points were raised. He said, uh, "Never, I would like you and I to join forces uh, in fighting corruption because I've listened to your campaign messages when we were campaigning. You seem to be extremely decided on how to violently fight against corruption. And my job is to fight corruption. So I would like for us to join hands. You used your pastoral favor of uh, demanding um, equity and clean politics and anti-corruption. And then I'll use my lawyer background to insist on doing things the right way and legally. And uh, then let's fight this thing together. In a move to promote national unity and reconciliation and build an inclusive government, Mwanawasa appointed some opposition party members that included Ngandu Magande, among others. At that first meeting, I said, the president has voiced his concern on corruption. I am somebody who doesn't accept even a small bit of corruption. I don't want you to look at individuals on the basis of tribe, on the basis of their religion, on the basis of qualifications, on the basis of anything, not even a political party. I told them, I know you NIP people have had a problem to walk into this office. You PND people have had a problem to walk into this office. I said, now I'm both UNIP, I'm both MMD, I'm both uh, 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 UPND. So for me, any Zambian who walks here will be treated because he's a Zambian. Why is it that when I ask the opposition members of parliament to come and help me to administer the problems of this nation, those members of parliament who accept to do this national task must be disciplined, must be expelled from their party, from their positions. Why? Why? Is it because is it because they don't like the president of this Zambia, this country? Or is it because or is it because they merely want to be at status themselves? In the same year, Mwanawasa worked with civil society to constitute a broadly representative constitution review commission that was tasked to collect views from the public for constitutional amendment and recommend the best mode of adopting the new constitution. The constitutional reform process was not concluded until after President Mwanawasa's death. We have nevertheless chosen and decided to go ahead at these constitutional reforms. We do so not because we seek power or that we desire to play a game of deceit or that we mean to cheat. We do so because we do not believe in the current constitution as a good basis for political, social, and economic emancipation. We do so because we recognize that the current constitution is not only defective, inadequate, and oppressive in many ways, but it, that it has become altogether suffocating and the source of conflict and confrontation in our land. We all the, with all the good attempts at political harmony and the democracy, our constitution fails us. With all the good attempts and intentions at social and economic development, we have been a disaster and continue to remain one of the poorest countries in the world. With all the desires and quests for freedom and rights for our people, 
we are still enslaved by our own constitution and continue to remain in painful bondage. Yes, we have agreed to make yet another attempt because we cannot surrender ourselves to past deceit and failure. We have a duty to our nation, to ourselves uh, first and uh, forever to our posterity. We cannot give up on our nation and on our people just because some president and uh, his leadership cheated on us. We must accept that uh, we were cheated and deceived, yes. But let us not give up on this account but rather learn lessons from it and continue to try. Mwanawasa's government also implemented a number of important policy reforms, such as decentralization and an anti-corruption campaign that saw the prosecution of several former government officials. I call upon you to embark on the implementation of this policy with a common and clear vision and unity of purpose. With the, these remarks, I declare the national decentralization policy officially launched. May the almighty God bless you all. I thank you for your attention. Manawasa's government revitalized the economy in three main ways. The government prioritized food security by enhancing its support towards agriculture. President Mwanawasa launched the Winter Maze Project, which turned out to be a success in addressing critical food shortage, especially after he rejected the importation of genetically modified maize consignments from the United States of America on grounds that the food could be harmful to human beings and the environment. Our people here appreciate the efforts which we made to ensure that we brought the relief food to our people. Now, it was natural that we had to find food to our people and ensure that not a single person died. The famine was severe and uh, we were offered as a country GMO maize. We refused to accept GMO maize because we were not certain as to the safety of this type of food. So we said our people will not be fed on GMO maize. At that time, there were a lot of countries, including the United Kingdom and the USA, who said 2 million, 2.9 million of the Zambians are going to starve to death because they have refused to accept GMO maize. Not a single Zambian died from uh, starvation. And to me, and to my administration, this is indeed a pride. We have, in the process, gained international respect. We have, in the process, gained international respect after the fact that uh, we were and are a sovereign state and we were merely exercising our sovereignty to eat and not to eat what we wanted. Second, the government resuscitated the strategic mining industry, which had been in free fall since the 1970s, by bringing new investors, as well as generating revenue in form of taxes for the government. The move led to job creation and the rebirth of the Copper Belt province. The economic front, of course, he, was, he, he, he wanted to make sure that uh, the Zambian people benefit from the resources that Zambia has. That was paramount for him. And whenever we had arguments or discussions, he would say wherever there was a conflict between foreign and local, local pre sh should prevail. Okay, me, I, okay, I, would, I used to like to, maybe from the, my profession, I thought that it was important that Zambia attracts foreign direct investments. In 2004, President Levi Mwanawasa called on the international community to write off Zambia's external debt, which had placed a huge burden on the Treasury. In return for the debt cancellation,
Mwanawasa said Zambia would give the International Monetary Fund IMF a country that promoted good governance, the rule of law, and respect for human rights. Mwanawasa's government was under pressure from the International Monetary Fund to cut spending in order to qualify for debt relief under the highly indebted poor countries HIPIC initiative. The government applied a series of austerity measures which eventually culminated into the near total cancellation of Zambia's foreign debt. I pray that many Zambians can remember Levy as a man who shifted the destiny of our country, um, especially that when we came into government, there was a $7.2 billion debt. The considerable resources freed from debt repayments allowed the government to create more jobs and invest in key social sectors such as education, agriculture, and health. On a personal level, Manawasa suffered a minor stroke in April 2006, two months before his mother died in June. Mwanawasa recovered and won a second term in September 2006. I'm equally grateful to all of you for your continuous confidence in the movement for multi-party democracy. Mwanawasa's good policies also helped to lower inflation and spread some benefits to the poor. His anti-corruption drive won the endorsement of the international community and during his presidency, Zambia attracted unprecedented foreign investments. We actually set and wrote a very short memo for President Mwanawasa. By the time I was seeing him uh, with Moses to brief him on his tour, we had advised him on what not to say, how to say what he says, and what to say. And we said, this is a document for the president's eyes only. And we said, Mr. President, don't go off this paper. If you are seeing the IMF MD, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Kato, you say the way we have said here. The terms, some of them are complicated. Don't say physical, say physical. The physical is for uh, sports. Physical is for money. So, learn even how to pronounce these words. Don't appear like you have never had structure adjustment. Say it that way. And at the end of it, let's see how we do. And really, that was my first time to be an advisor to a head of state. And I realized it was not easy. Because he confessed, he says, after we more or less finished, he says, I didn't know I would have this opportunity to see these heads of institutions. Because even just talking to the regional director for Africa, for IMF, they were sending me small boys. Now I have seen the big people. So I said, the last meeting you have, you are going to see the World Bank man. Those are the people who, who give money for development. So here's a list of what you say. You tell them you are going to be in control on the anti-corruption uh, fight, you are going to head the anti-AIDS fight, you are going to head the anti-poverty fight. These you should say, I will be the head. The rest you can say, I think I have a good team at the minister. When we went there, he didn't even warn me, and we were seated and he was talking to uh, 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 MD uh, Offerness Offer Fund. Uh, the, uh, uh, the World Bank man. And as he was finishing, he says, Mr. President, I would like you to help Zambia. And I have a capable Zambian team which is going to run the economy. I consider him as one of the greatest patriots that this country has ever had, who loved this country so much that he was uh, prepared to give his life you know, to this country. Uh, I remember when I was his campaign manager, we, in which we came up with the doctrine of uh, the New Deal, he truly wanted to change this country in three ways. The first one, 
wanted to give Zambia a new constitution that would stand the test of time. And secondly, he wanted to stop corruption and the abuse of office in this country. And uh, the last thing for which he was very passionate about, he wanted to ensure that there was a rule of law instead of rule of men. And he used to tell me often as we were campaigning with him, together with the former Vice President uh, Kavinele, that he wanted to save this country for just five years. And thereafter he was going to retire and let another person take over. And I worked for, for him, I was his deputy minister in State House. He sent me to local government, he sent me to Minister of Finance, and lastly I, I served at Minister of uh, Industry. Uh, uh, and before, later on, he decided to go for a second term in his second term, I, he sent me to Libya as his ambassador. So, one can say really that we had a, a person who truly loved Zambia and he did his best in the five years that I worked with him as the president. I think he, he, he evolved and he gave his best and he became a model to many. On a continental level, in what many described as a revolutionary leadership, Mwanawasa, as chairman of SADC, openly criticized then president of Zimbabwe, Robert Mugabe, for what he termed as bad leadership that did not respect the rule of law and the tenets of democracy. Only last week, SADC ministers responsible for Peace and security said they doubted that the presidential runoff elections in Zimbabwe would be free and fair. In view of the foregoing, I would be failing in my duties as chairman of SADC if I did not offer timely advice to our member state. It is therefore my considered view that the runoff election in Zimbabwe must be postponed to a later date. Uh, this has become even more necessary following the announcement of one of the candidates that he is withdrawing. So there is no need to be ashamed in announcing that the runoff is called off until further notice. I urge the responsible authorities in Zimbabwe to implement this postponement. This is to allow for the establishment of conditions that are suitable for holding of generally free and fair elections in accordance with the Zimbabwean law, the second principles and the charter and conventions of the African Union. On the 28th of June 2008, President Mwanawasa left Zambia to attend the African Union Heads of State Summit in the tourist city of Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. The following day, hours before the start of the summit, Mwanawasa was reported to have suffered a major stroke that left him in a critical condition. He was subsequently flown to Percy Military Hospital in France for treatment, but died on 19th August 2008. President Mwanawasa was put to rest on 3rd September 2008. He will be remembered as a political reformist who secured debt relief and led Zambia 
through a period of unprecedented economic growth with key economic indicators such as reduction in inflation and exchange rates as well as an increase in the country's GDP. Speaking in a pre-recorded wheel that was broadcast on national television and radio, Mwanawasa thanked Zambians for giving him the opportunity to lead the country and urged citizens and the then government MMD to continue the fight against corruption. I want to say farewell to all the people of Zambia and I'm grateful to all of you for giving me the opportunity during part of my life to serve you as the president. It was a privilege which I cherished up to my death. I did all my best to improve the standard of living of you, my people. I strove to attend to the production of sufficient food for domestic consumption and for export, and worked hard to encourage investment, both local and foreign, so as to create jobs and so as to enhance the growth of our economy. I believed that uh, national development could only be sustained if good governance, respect for the rule of law, and democracy were encouraged and taken for granted. So, we are a family. Corruption. While Mwanawasa saw himself primarily as a lawyer, or Ichibumba, as he was affectionately referred to, many Zambians remember him fondly as a political reformist who secured debt relief laid Zambia through a period of sustained economic growth, promoted good governance, and consolidated the country's democratic tradition. President Levi Patrick Mwanawasa may be gone, but will never be forgotten, as his legacy will live on for many years and generations to come. Oh